that the owner of the leased helicopter wants it back. I was absolutely amazed, you know. The, uh, the phone started ringing at home very early this morning and uh, I've been absolutely amazed at the people from all the walks of life who have, uh, who have said that they're very, very keen to see the thing continue. The answer to the many inquiries came this afternoon after a meeting of the major sponsors of the service in the Newcastle Lord Mayor's Chambers. The sponsors have decided to call on the community to raise the necessary funds to buy a fully fitted out rescue helicopter. Deputy Lord Mayor Alderman Don Geddes. Well, the donations can be commenced tomorrow morning at 9.30 at any branch of the Westpac banks within the Hunter Valley area or at 2KO. They, do those donations are going to be accepted readily. Now you're also asking people to go guarantor. I'm asking them people to go guarantor at this stage, purely in the short term, to enable a definite commitment as to the amount of money needed to, to acquire the uh, helicopter. It's in the short term because I'm confident that the uh, public's going to be able to subscribe sufficiently for us to be able to meet the appeal. The Royal Australian Air Force Base at Williamtown has two search and rescue helicopters, but a spokesman says they can only be used in life and death situations for the public. He says the base does not have the capacity to carry out medical lifts throughout the valley, and that its first priority must be to support the many flying operations undertaken at Williamtown. everything this is uh, the biggest thing we've ever ever achieved if we pull it off and uh, we've been trying for years to do it like most other clubs to be the, the biggest weekend we've ever had if you can pull it off you've had some problems with the coaching area early on in the season now you're poised to take out the title what's the secret do you think of the, the players themselves uh, I think it's the youth we've got in the team uh, the support they've got for the club and the support they've got for the coach Warren Anderson Warren stepped in early on in the season when there was a, a gap left by Peter Irving moving and the boys had really backed him up all the way. Do you agree with some reports that it's just a formality that you beat Hamilton Red Star this weekend? No, <laughs> there's no formality in soccer. Um, on the law of averages, Red Star haven't gained a point yet this season. Uh, not many teams go through a season without gaining a point and this is going to be a very hard game.
The state treasurer, Mr. Ken Booth, and his wife, and the deputy Lord Mayor, Alderman Don Geddes, were among the official guests to welcome the players to Newcastle. The first week of the two-week carnival will be a bound robin between the states. It's a piece of fourth competition for the coveted E. Glendon and Shield. New South Wales hasn't won it since 1961, and the team members say this could be the year when they win it back. The last week will be the single event of players competing for the Australian title. Organiser David Smith says it will be a tough competition. I think this year it will be very high. We have again some of our international competitors from uh, representing Australia. And instead of Australia, obviously they're representing their own states this time. It's the Australian National Tournament and each state in Australia is participating and we have several of the players competing in this year's tournament that we saw in the Brisbane Games. The match, as was expected after years of feeling between the two clubs and an incident in last year's finals, was a fiery affair, spiteful at times. It exploded into an all-in brawl in the early moments. Referee Mark is allowing this to go on and it's on. Hartman's in the Mallory Graham. Look at him fighting there. I knew this would blow up this Look at Rick Taylor, fair diggum. The first man dismissed was the Lakes United hooker, Kevin Hardman. He took West captain coach Gary Martini Ooh, a, with what appeared to be a late tackle. Many critics, though, thought he'd been treated harshly. Oh, there's a penalty for sure. Hartman's going away from trouble. I'll tell you what, he's in some now. He's off. off. He's unloaded him. He's off. Hartman's off. There's Martini's kick. One, two, and bang. Chest. It, wasn't, uh, it was late, not high. Next man to go to the showers was the Lakes United skipper Robert Taylor. He'd been playing it pretty tough all day. He was later charged with punches. Both camps were highly critical of referee Marcus' handling of the fixture. Last year, West lost players at a vital time in similar circumstances and failed to win their fourth title in a row. And Lakes can ill afford to be under strength for the games ahead. Hartman's already in the uh, shower. He'll be there Monday night. Rip Taylor, the captain's coach, plenty of experience. Coached the side a couple of years ago, the one the Clayton Cup, there it is. Whoosh!
During last month's bitterly cold weather, the council hit a maximum demand peak at a time when the Upper Hunter district was experiencing some of the heaviest snow this century. It was the biggest bulk power supply account ever to be paid by the council. Council Chairman Alderman Kevin Evans said July set a record for power consumption in the state and for demand on the Commission. Well, I think it's very heartening that when the situation arose where warmth and uh, that comfort was needed, that the public at large turned to electricity. Industry in Australia to compete has got to modernise and uh, upgrade its, its equipment. So we uh, see uh, the plan of a 5% reduction in import, uh, imported machinery into Australia as a way of uh, creating about uh, 84,000 jobs directly in the metal industry and uh, 270,000 jobs indirectly uh, by flow-on effects. You've had a close look at the plan. Do you think it will work? Yes, I think it will work. Uh, if the, the plan requires uh, uh, upgrading of, uh, of plant and, and technology, as, uh, as I've said, that with all of those factors, uh, it's the basis for restructuring the metal industry. And if we don't uh, restructure the metal industry and improve, uh, then that will only lead to greater unemployment. And uh, of course, the manufacturing industry is really the heart of uh, employment uh, in Australia. I'm not surprised because the so-called reduction in beer prices uh, in the budget was a swindle, just like the other tax changes. They're just window dressing for the election. The bulk of the beer trade, that's the full-strength beer, has been left alone, and an increased tax has been put on the super light beers. Well, Mr Keating has said the Commonwealth Government does not have the authority to order a reduction in the retail price of light lager. No, that's a matter for... Well, the state government could, but I don't believe in price control myself. I think it's a matter for the marketplace. And if there's competition there, well, the prices will come down. But the government simply hasn't taken enough off the tax to make it worthwhile for people to change. Although any more to make light beer a preferred drink and reduce the road toll was to be commended, Mr Carlton said the wholesale price reductions were not significant enough to bring about a reduction for the consumer. Like the whole budget, uh, people are still left at 46 cents in the dollar at average weekly earnings. So it's all there, as Barry Jones says, to dress up for the election. After the election, we'll have more taxes, capital gains, the lot. So I think it's a swindle, and beer drinkers have been part of the swindle. Mr Keating has said that the Commonwealth Government... to win. 
discuss the controversial task of the Tufta housing development after a resident voiced their protest to the last week's work containing committee meetings, but they weren't prepared for the reception they received. About 50 residents from the adjacent Tufta housing development and new day house placards in hand for the opportunity to tell the owners about the problems they see the project over the state. The residents who live in the nearby cluster housing development say the planned project is cluttered and will inevitably cause social problems for its inhabitants and the area as a whole. Others argued that it would exacerbate the existing drainage problems. This photo shows Mr Burns, who lives across the road from the development, standing in his backyard after a medium fall of rain. But Alderman Lanham believes these problems can be solved. Well, most of the objections here this afternoon have been based on the drainage and problems further up the street and down the street. But if one looks closely at the uh, proposal, uh, it uh, has great advantages in as much that most of the water coming off the houses can be piped and taken to the creek over at the back. So there should be really less water coming onto this particular creek this side than uh, at the present time. So. Uh, it complies with the code in all respects and it's going to be very hard for council to say no to a proposition such as this. A treasure trove of delicate endeavours is to be found upstairs in the Royal Blind Society building in Layman Street, Newcastle. It's mostly the work of the Newcastle branch of the Embroiderers Guild of New South Wales, but about 100 items are from Newcastle's sister city in Japan, Ube. It was appropriate then that Dr. Kiyo Haru Ono from Newcastle University should officially open the exhibition. Dr. Ono told the audience that he had just returned from a three-week visit to Japan, which had reminded him of the strong links between Australia and his country. He said the Japanese are intensely interested in Australian society and was glad to see that the interest was returned in exhibitions like this. The embroidery will be there to marvel at between 10 and 5 each day until Saturday. I gave him Dr. nine and a half Sam out of ten as treasurer, treasurer and made sixteen billion dollars and the corporate sector in interest rates. and net raises However, by companies could have been uh, over the last on. four years. I gave him nine and a half out of ten as treasurer and listed him as one of the two best treasurers in the post-war period, the other being Sir Arthur Fadden. In terms of how many out of ten for his budget, it basically was a responsible and balanced budget but it wouldn't have hurt in terms of interest rates to have reduced the deficit a little more, so I gave him six and a half out of ten and encouraged him to keep on smiling. For years. Dr. Stammer said interest rates would continue to drop, to that and though he stressed they were liable to fluctuate, budget, he encouraged the business sector to take advantage of lower rates when conditions are favourable. They can now pay he also explained the benefits of a drop for the general public. People basically like lower interest rates because it reduces the cost of their paying their housing loan. It means less cost when they borrow. Of course, the ordinary person is also a saver, and the person who is a saver will now get slightly lower interest rates on their savings. But most people see themselves as borrowers not saving, and thus it will be very much welcomed by the average person. So are you fairly optimistic for a continued economic recovery? At present, Australia is in fact one of the most rapidly growing of the countries in the world. Alas, the sectors of the economy that still have to wait two or three years include uh, energy and heavy engineering. Thus, the Hunter Valley will not be in the forefront of the economic recovery in the next 18 months. 